Hello to everyone out there in the YouTube Multiverse. Brought here. Hey, do you get this from time to time from new players in your game? Alright, so the bugbear has an armor class of 5. My base Thaco is 20. My strength modifier is plus 1. So, I need a 16 to hit, right? You're close. Actually, it's a 14. No one said I'd have to do math. I'm out of here. Well, if you hold on just a bit, I'll be more than happy to explain it to you, along with armor class, hit points, and Thaco, and how all of it works together. Fine, I'll give you 10 minutes, and if I still don't understand, then I'm definitely out of here. 10 minutes? <laughs> you got it. Right after this. You're going to notice from time to time I'm glancing down. It's because the glare from my lights are hitting my glasses and causing some problems. I will be providing an affiliate link to drive through RPG for all the materials I use in today's video. Now first, I'm going to start with armor class. Now, the way armor class was explained to me back in 1978 was think about armor class as if it's the thickness of metal. Well, I get that. The thicker something is, the harder it is to break it. That's basically the premise that Gary Gygax used back when he was laying out armor class for Dungeons & Dragons. He was into playing naval war games with miniature ships. And he borrowed some of the rating systems that they used and just changed names. So, the lower the armor class, the harder the target is to hit. So, he took first class armor. Made it armor class one. A second class armor made that armor class two. All the way up to armor class ten being the worst possible armor that there is out there, which is none. Now, if you look at this chart from Arthur Arcana on page 25, titled Armor Class Table, it shows armor progression all the way from nothing down to full plate. When you apply your dexterity modifier, you can improve your odds of not being hit. Simply by following the dexterity chart here on page 11 of the player's handbook, you can clearly see the modifiers are right here in line with your ability scores. Here's an example. You have an armor class of 5. Your dexterity is a 15, which gives you a modifier of minus 1, which gives you an armor class of 4. Now with improvement to weapons and armor, giving them magical properties or enchanting them, will create game balance when fighting against higher hit die monsters or going against an undead foe. The only difference in magical armor is its classification, whether it's defense or protection. So say you have a helm of defense plus one. You would subtract one from your armor class. Now, bracers, charms, and rings have absolutely no armor cost value whatsoever. So, a uh, plus one ring of protection would give you an extra point to your hit points, giving you that little extra boost. While, say, plus one bracers of missile deflection would, you'd have to subtract one from your armor class only if it's against projectile type weapons. Oh, like darts or arrows? Correct. Now we're gonna look at hit points. Here's a chart from Arthur Canna on page 12. It's titled Character Class Table 1. Hit die, spell ability, and class level limit. You can clearly see here the hit die by class and also the maximum level for each class. Below the chart is a footnote that explains about the bonuses. For example, right down here, it says a monk starts with two four-sided hit die. That's 2d4. And then once you level, you only go up by one d4 after that. Now, everyone knows that the magic user has the lowest hit die, d4, in the game. While the barbarian rolls a d12, making him the, the highest hit die in the game as far as characters go. Now, just because a magic user has the lowest hit points in the game does not mean that they're going to die right off the bat during their first encounter. Now, the same can be said about every class. 
there's always that possibility your first time out the gate you're gonna die it's just part of the game characters with a low head die should stick to the back for reinforcement well you know like the magic user who uh, usually only starts out with one or two spells um, so you're gonna want to have to combine your spells you know uh, both offense and defensive in nature where the higher hit point characters are more for melee, you know, hand to hand, up close and personal. You know, where your range stay in the back lines with your magic user. The best thing about hit points is when you survive and you go to your next level, you get to roll your hit die again. So your magic user roll another d4. No matter what he gets, one, two, three, or four, it's added to those hit points. So let's say you had three hit points to start with. So roll four, you got seven now. Hey, you're on your way to getting more hit points. I know that can't be the best you can do for hit points, right? You're right. A high constitution can really help out. Here's the constitution chart from page 12 of the player's handbook. I know this will sound a bit confusing at first, but you'll see that it makes more sense later on as you progress through and apply your bonuses. Now you can see here where you add or subtract your bonus points depending on the level of your constitution, whether it's a 3 or an 18. Now personally, I always like to place my highest or my next highest ability score in my constitution just for this exact purpose. Well, why don't you start every character out with a minimum of 12 hit points or just roll a d20 and omit anything under 10? Just like video games have higher life points. Well, in video game theory, that'd be just fine. But if you have an advantage on hit points, so should every creature you encounter in the game. There has to be game balance. Where's all the fun in one-shotting everything? And... You don't even have a risk of dying? That, that's not fun at all. Now, if that was the case, we'd be playing Superheroes Don't Die, not AD&D. Now, speaking of attacking, that leads us right up to Thaco. Or to hit AC0. You can see right here, Appendix E on page 196 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Now, this was printed back in 1979. You know what's here? The, the, the giant ant has a 16 to hit AC0. Its armor class is 3. Now the rest of that information there is for the Dungeon Master to use through the encounters. If you happen to come across a giant ant. There are several, I mean several FACO charts for players and monsters throughout the books. Now if you look at page 74 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, you're going to see the attack matrix for clerics, druids, and monks. And this is based off of level progression. Obviously, you get a reward if you successfully go up three levels. This will increase your Thaco. Now, when you go in there and start adding your strength bonus from page 9 of the player's handbook, see your uh, strength table 2, ability adjustments. You begin to notice how all three armor class, hit points, and Thaco all play part in your combat and your survival. Now, back to the example that I used at the beginning of the video. It's very common. Most new people to the game, even some of them playing for a while and might have took a break every now and then, have a hard time trying to figure out their own combat abilities. So to make this example as simple as I can without confusing anyone, I wrote it down on my whiteboard. Right here. So your thake goes 20. Your strength modifier is a 1. The bugbear's armor class is a 5. So, method 1, which I find to be the most confusing, is you got parentheses with a 20, minus plus 1, in parentheses, minus 5. Oh, well, that gives you a 14. But I prefer method 2, which is a lot more digestible. You got a 20 minus parentheses 5 plus 1 into parentheses. And you can obviously see where that's a 14. 
I didn't sign up for an algebra lesson. Hey, neither did I when I started playing. But it makes sense, and it's a lot easier to grasp. Well, personally, I prefer method two, because it makes more sense. You know, by doing all this every time, you're going to know exactly what you need to hit any armor class. From 10, being no armor at all, all the way up to armor class zero, where you got full on plate with a shield. Now, when you start getting into negative armor classes, it does get a bit difficult. But, you know, by the time you get there, you're already going to have a chart, you're going to have your own books, or you're going to be printing out copies from other people's books. So you got your own. I really do hope that this answered your questions and you're no longer confused about any of this. All right, I understand that it's all part of the game and with every game that's worth playing, there's something that players involved must do themselves. Do you think Rod explained everything? Comment below and tell him about it. He makes a point to answer all questions and comments when he sees them. Hey, until next time, thanks for watching and we'll be seeing you in the next video.